So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to write a short script that's going to allow us to compare the price of a product over several different websites. But instead of having to write one script per site, we're going to write one main function, treat it like a bit of a boilerplate function where we can just give it the URL, we can give it the CSS selectors, and it's going to return that data for us. Doing it this way where possible is much, much neater and it's also much more expandable. So let's get started and I will show you what I mean. So I have my code editor and we're going to import the things that we need. So I'm going to use HTTPX. You can, of course, use requests if you prefer that. That works just as well. I'm also going to use Selectolax as my parser. Uh, I prefer this one. It's uh, very fast and I think it's very handy and it's the best one I've used in a long time. So that's probably sticking with it. So what I mentioned at the start of the video is we're going to write a function that's going to be able to take in a URL and a a selector and then go and get that information so that's going to entail something like this so we'll call it get uh, data and we're going to give it a few bits of information so we're going to have to determine what store we're getting this from so we're going to pass in store uh, which will be a, a string then we need to give it the url uh, obviously the url that we want it to visit and then also the selector the selector is going to be the CSS selector of where the data is on the page so it knows what to do. So now I can just construct the request. So I'll do my response is equal to HTTPX.get. And now we're going to say we want to give it the URL and we're going to need to pass in some headers. I always tend to just do the user agent where possible. So we'll do user agent like this. And I'm just going to grab a user agent string from over here just so I'll have to go and get another one. And let's put that in there. So now that we have this, I'm going to save and format with black. Thank you. Get that all nice and tidy. It's still going to complain to me because the line's too long. Thank you, Flake. I don't care in this instance. So now we're making a request to this URL that we're going to give our function. We need to do something with the HTML data that's going to come back. So we'll say our HTML is equal to the uh, HTML parser for response.h text from here we only need to grab one piece of information which is the price so we'll say our price is equal to html.css first of the selector that we have given it at the top then we can just return out uh, the data in whatever function or form we want it to be in so i'm going to say that i want uh, a dictionary back and i'm just going to put that the store key should be equal to the store information this is what we're passing in at the, the top of the function there pointed at the screen which is i'm sure very very helpful to you guys over there that one that one got it and then the price which is going to be the price that we've grabbed there so this is the basic function that we're going to use you can see how this could be adapted or how easy it can be to expand because we only need to give it a little bit of information to actually get that that data back right so now we want to do our main function so we'll, i'll start that here uh, please and we'll put this in the middle of the screen i love that vim shortcut zz by the way uh, so what we're going to do is well what do we want our information to look like when it comes out uh, i want a list of dictionaries of all of it that we're going to get so i'm going to start with my list and we'll say that our, this is our results list uh, and now we can start with our get data function here uh, we'll skip the putting information in it at the moment and we'll say well we got two should we start with two let's do that there we go uh, and finally we will we'll just print out our results down here and then we just need to put in our, our main if name is equal to main and then run the main function like this Okay, cool. Save that. Format with black to make everything neat and tidy. It's going to do this. I'm going to change that in a minute. So we now have the skeleton of our program set up. We need to just go ahead and get this information here, the store URL and the selector. Now, surprise, surprise, I'm going to use Amazon for this and also another website uh, which is going to have the same product on. So let's go ahead and come over here. So the first thing that we want is the URL. Now I know Amazon URL, so we can get rid of all of this and you just want the slash and then everything else afterwards can go away. Let's copy this and start here. So our first one is we want the store, which is Amazon, oh, spell that right. Then the URL, which is this. And then we want the selector as we would put it in to actually search for this information. So let's come back to our browser go inspect i'm sure 
any of you that have done this before know that generally speaking it is a span with class A dash off screen for Amazon that's tenderly where the, where the prices are so span dot a off screen so this is going to put the selector into here and it's going to return the element back but what I didn't do is I didn't put here we want to return it back we want to strip and we want the dot text from this element there so if you don't do that it's just going to give you the raw element information which obviously you can't pass with your eyes so you're going to have to ask for the text version instead uh, so that should work for us what i'm actually going to do now is i'm going to remove this other one and i'm just going to check and see if this works so we can run python 3 price comp.py and uh, let's see did i win straight away no i failed uh no except a strip Okay, so I have put this the wrong way around. You can't strip the white space from the text if you haven't asked for the text first. Let's go. Perfect. So you can see now how you can start to use this function just to expand out and to actually uh, choose more and more websites and then get that data sent back to you here. So let's add in another one. Uh, let's go ahead and do, not that. So let's have another one, get data, and let's, I'm gonna format all this up much neater in just a second. Toman, and we want to grab the URL, which is over here, looks like this paste that in and then the selector again let's just grab the price you would probably want to tidy up the data tidy up the data a little bit uh, span uh, div class price by the looks of it these selectors are nice and easy yes that is by design no one needs to see really long horrible CSS selectors when you're trying to explain something to them there we go so this is now uh, sorted this out although for some reason it's put these other ones put this one over a different line. So what I'm gonna do just because is put these over uh, the other line as well, just to make this a bit tidier. Great, cool. So let's run this again now and see. So now we can see that we have our list of dictionaries. It has the store and the price for these two bits that we've put in. So if you found this product somewhere else, or maybe you had three or more stores, Instead of writing all of this extra stuff again at the top, let's go up to it. Instead of writing this for each one, what we can do is we can just ship that off up here because obviously don't repeat yourself with your code and we can then add in them down here. So this is pretty short and simple, um, but hopefully you kind of get the idea of where you can go with this. And this one will go particularly well with the email script that I wrote, which you're gonna wanna watch in this video right here. Cover that up.